This lesson introduces logical operators, both inequality and equality operators, and shows how these produce Boolean values. Boolean values are just special values that take that are usually interpreted as true or false, but also take the values of 1 for true or 0 for false. Finally, we'll see how we can combine logical statements to construct quite complex expressions that involve and, or, and not. This lesson introduces logical operators. So we'll start by opening lesson 12, importing it. Then I'll simply run a couple cells just to get Jupyter started. And we're going to start by importing some data. So this is the momentum data that we've used before. It consists of 10 momentum returns that track portfolios, sort of so-called winners and losers. You know, for now, we're just going to treat this as data, and it's just going to be used in the examples. The logical statements are in practice very important. They play a big role when we want to do so-called program flow. That is, we want to make decisions based on values of data. For example, if a return was negative, we'll want to do one thing. If a return was positive, we'll want to do something else. So we'll see these very soon in a follow-up lesson where we look about if blocks. So, you know, if return is negative, then do something else. Return is positive, do something else. Um, so in practice, these are going to play a really important role for actually writing effective programs. We'll also use them in mathematical operations. So they can be used to, say, filter returns, where we're just going to want to select the subset of returns that are positive or other operations related to that. We can even multiply things by true-false statements, because true is actually just going to be 1 and false is going to be 0. So whenever you multiply something by a true-false, then any value that is false will be filled with zero, and any value that is true will be filled with itself. So to get started, we're asked to count a few things. So we've already, I'm going to start by importing NumPy, just to get NumPy sum, to make things a little easier. So we're asked to count a few things. So if portfolio is 1 and 10, Count the number of elements that are less than zero, greater than or equal to zero, or exactly equal to zero. And then we'll do some more follow-up for portfolio five. So I'll start with momentum, 01. So that's my low momentum portfolio, so-called losers. If I want to just find the ones that are less than zero, I could just run this statement. And when I run this statement, what you see is you get another series. So momentum, is, momentum 01 is a series. And when I do a comparison, to a number, I'm going to get what's called a Boolean series. So you can see at the bottom it says D type bool. This tells me it's a series that contains only trues or falses. So now I have true or false, but what's important, at least for this counting exercise, is to remember that false is just zero and true is one. So when I want to find out how many are less than zero, I can simply sum up the number that are less than zero. I can do the same thing for greater than zero. In fact, we're asked to do greater than or equal to zero. So the greater than or equal to sign is just greater than equal. And you know, if I run that cell, we'll get another number, 258 greater than or equal to zero, 245 less than or equal to zero. And if I want to find out momentum 01 exactly equals zero, so I use the double equals, and I'll just sum that. Don't need a second parenthesis, not strictly necessary. It doesn't hurt you to have extra parentheses, it just doesn't make for clean code. So there are actually none exactly equal to zero. That's not too much of a surprise. So that's really just the basic comparison operator. So we have less than, less than equal, greater than, greater than equal, or equal, which is a double equal. So there are five, but of course one of the nice things about logical things is we can combine logical things with other operators. So there are actually a number of operators we can use that actually allow us to, say, combine two or to negate things. So for example, if I want to, if I start with momentum, 01 less than zero, I just call this negative returns. So that's just going to be a vector of negative returns. That's exactly what I have on the right-hand side above, where I have the series 
that has false, true, 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 and so on. So what if I want to get the ones that are greater than or equal to zero? So it turns out what I could do there is just define, call them greater than equal zero returns. And I'm just going to say that's going to be the negative of negative returns. So in fact, it's going to be the logical negation. So this is this tilde means everywhere I have a false, make it true, and everywhere I have a true, make it false. So this is the logical negation operator that we can use. And so for example, um, if I want to say, look at this vector here, and I just, or this cell, you'll see it has the exact opposite pattern of what we have above. So up top was false, true, 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 true. Now we have true, false, 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 false. So these are exactly the same. And in fact, if I want to prove that these are the same, I can actually combine things. So I could take negative returns. I could then use this vertical bar, which is interpreted as an or. So if I take negative returns, or not negative returns, well, you either have to be a negative return or a not negative return. And then I just sum these up. you see I get 503. In fact, you can see the series is 503. And so in fact, every return, of course, must be one of these two. There are other logical, there are other combination operators. So I also have and, so I wanna combine them. I could do negative returns and not negative returns. Obviously, since one of these is always false, when I use an and, I'm gonna have true and false. Well, true and false is always gonna be false. Before, above, we have true or false, and true or false, of course, is always going to be true. So if I print this, I should find that I actually don't have any. So that's no surprise there. So between using the or and negation plus the five core set of logical operators, we can combine a huge amount, we can construct a huge amount of logical variables that can then be used in constructing program flow or for interacting, creating what we call interaction variables or dummy variables for regressions. There are lots of things we can do with these. The next problem just asks me again to sort of repeat these things. So I wanna count the number of times that two portfolios are negative. That is, I wanna find the number of times where both of them are less than or equal to zero. In fact, I didn't actually complete my previous problem, so I'll actually go back before I move on to this. I'm going to complete the previous problem. So we're asked to count the number of times portfolio 5 are greater in absolute value than two times the standard deviation of the returns of that portfolio. So you can think of these as outliers. So the first thing I need to do is I need to compute the standard deviation. So I'm going to use this function std, which we've seen, and that will give me the standard deviation of the momentum 5 portfolio. And then I want to simply count the number of times where it's actually greater than this value. So this is a bit more of a realistic scenario because here we're going to compute some a value from data and then we're going to do a logical operation based on that value. Count how many sort of positive outliers we have. So we have 62 outliers that are above the one standard deviation level. If I wanted to actually make that two times standard deviation, I can just add in two times STD here. It's a good idea when you're doing logical comparisons to use parentheses fairly liberally. This is because in, in all programming languages, operators have precedence. That decides how things are, are sort of done. So in this case, it turns out multiplication has higher precedence than inequality. So this would have statement would actually be okay without parentheses, but there are statements where you have maybe not the precedence that you want, the easy way to ensure that things get computed in the right way is to use parentheses because expressions inside parentheses always get computed first before parentheses, before involving expressions between um, expressions in parentheses. So, you know, liberal use of parentheses can be a good way to avoid lots of bugs. So I can run this and you see we only have about 20. So that's only about 20 out of 503 that are larger than two standard deviations. So not a huge number of sort of really strong positive days, but that's expected from returns, which are not too far away from a normal distribution.
So the final part of this assignment asks me again to look again at compound returns, which I've already taken a, a sort of brief look at. So we want to count the number of times that returns in 1 and 10 are both negative. So I can simply do momentum 01 less than 0 and momentum 10 less than 0. So these would both be negative returns. We can see what happens when I run that block. When I run that block, I get an error. And this is exactly what I mentioned before. You get this, say, cannot compare D-typed float64 with array of type bool. And that's because operator precedence. Because essentially what's happened is this and operator is going to have a higher precedence than the inequality. So this expression is not going to be evaluated the way I want it to be. So I want to make sure things work right. I'm going to add parentheses around my two comparisons so that these will get evaluated first, so that my inequality will go before my and. And I can run it again, and now we get a Boolean array that has both, and finally, I can simply run that cell. And we see there are 136 times where both returns were negative. Let's count the times number of returns before you want to or greater and absolute value than two times their respected standard deviations. So this is a similar assignment to what we had before, except again, using compounding. So I need standard deviation of one. Again, I can be very, you can write compact code. So I'll give you an example of a compact code here. So I momentum 01 greater than equal to momentum 01 standard deviation. So I don't have to actually assign this to a variable and Momentum 10 greater than or equal to momentum 10. That's standard deviation. And again, I need the two times both, because I want to look at two times standard deviation. And now I'm going to add parentheses around my two times just to make sure this statement does exactly what I want. Again, this is kind of a big statement. I think for most people, it makes sense to split this up into a few lines. There's no real important cost to having three or four lines here rather than one other than just maybe a slight bit more typing. But of course the gain is that you're gonna end up with cleaner code and deep down that's in most cases much more valuable um, than that. So you can see, at least from the, the 10 we can see, there's no, there are actually no times where that happens, but I can compute the sum. And we see that it happens twice. So there were just two days where both of these two portfolios had large positive returns at the same time. So in other words, that doesn't happen very often. Finally, if you don't like the and symbol, and again, I don't really know any reason not to like it, but you can do these things another way. So in particular, if I return to my, my first sum up here, where I look at the times when both returns are negative, there's an alternative way to do the and. So if I want to get rid of this and there, so I just have my two expressions here, there's a, NumPy has a whole set of logical functions, so I can use np dot logical and. And then I'm gonna call this as a function with two arguments, one and two. And this is exactly the same as what I have above with the and. So if I run this cell, we'll see that we'll get a Boolean vector out. So this is the time where they're both negative, and of course, if I want to, I could just sum this, and I should get 136 which is what I have above. So NumPy has a complete set of, of logical functions. There's np logical or, which takes two arguments, a or b, There's np logical not, which takes a single function and returns the negation. Some people might prefer this method. Personally, I prefer this sort of shortcut, which uses and, um, which uses the ampersand or the pipe for or or the tilde for not. The only real gotcha you have with the symbols is you have to be a little bit careful about operator precedent. Precedence. That is, you got to make sure that everything is computed in the right way. If you use the function approach that I have here, that's always going to happen. So you don't actually have that operator precedence issue. This lesson introduced logical operators. In particular, there are five logical operators, less than, less than equal, equal, greater than equal, or greater than. We saw that these logical operators all produce Boolean values, 
which are interpreted as true or false. These values are also interpretable as 1 or 0, 1 being true, which allows them to be used in mathematical operations. For example, we can sum the number of trues to get the count, or we can multiply variables by a true-false so that values that are true return themselves and values that are false return 0. Finally, we saw how we can use combination operators, AND, OR, and NOT, to construct complex operations that bring together multiple logical operators.